it truly feels like we are in survival mode for Bitcoin as we do continue on with this thread of analysis that we've been having for Bitcoin with it still continually to struggle right around that 58,500 ish marker. And in today's video, we'll be focusing on kind of what to expect, I suppose, um, coming into this next week of price action. And then, of course, bringing the whole picture together, because as we have been saying, coming into this next week, it's a very, very important week, but it'll be a very, very long week. There will be a quad witching date next Friday, and that is very likely to see where the market does pivot. Anyways, uh, before we get into that, we can just jump actually right onto this one, in fact, and we can start off right in over here with the daily price statistics. We can see that Friday has been slightly, ever so slightly, in favor of negative closures, uh, more or less coin flip here, to be fair. Um, but the average return for those positive and negative closing Fridays is more or less about the same at about 2.5%, so likely marking off the range for today. We saw that yet again happen yesterday, but let's see what that kind of imply in terms of a bit of a range for price action on this current Friday. To the downside, that would imply somewhere around about 50, uh, sorry, 56,500. And to the upside, that would imply somewhere around about 59,500 to 59,600-ish region. I will let you know, however, or a little bit of an insight into what will be a big portion of next week's analysis is this. I do think that the upside um, target of this would probably be less likely. The reason why I believe it'd be less likely is because if we go over here to a tweet that I literally just made, and holy shit, you can barely even see it on the screen right here. It's like absolutely fucking massive. I don't know why it printed out like this, but perhaps I'll just show you the actual uh, page over here. And what I've done is I've done the exact same, um, uh, what's it called, calculations for September lows as I have done now for September highs and found something rather interesting. The high for September was actually typically put on very early within the month, actually, um, almost always within the first uh, 10 days. In fact, the average would be just under eight days. And if you go down the list right here, only twice has it happened in the back half of September. In fact, uh, that would be September 19th, which happened twice. Other than that, it's always been you know well before that, typically within the first week, actually. Um, so what does that mean? Again, as we do kind of head into September 19th, which is actually my fight date, which I'm really excited about uh, next week, but, um, but we you know, what does that mean? It, it means that we've very likely already seen the high for September, which would be where? 59,800. So, you know, if Bitcoin were to play out the upside of this trajectory right here, probably a little bit less likely. Again, not impossible, especially as long as we are before next Friday's event, which is the quad witching date. But hey, uh, you know, it's still say a little bit less likely here. Moving on and going back into my notes uh, as we can actually once again address the opening chart, which was still playing out, I wouldn't necessarily call this a rejection just yet, of the meeting on the daily HPDR bounds. But you can see that's a very clear and obvious boundary, meaning that as long as Bitcoin is closing below it, we do expect Bitcoin to actually probably put in a little bit of a local high here and pop back down. We saw a slight attempt for that yesterday, and today the current number is about 58,555 on CME very specifically. So if you do see Bitcoin continue to struggle around that region, especially close below that region, probably does open up uh, the door for next week to try once again to the downside. And then the real question is, does Bitcoin take out Wednesday's low or not? If it does, get ready for another retest of, uh, of September lows, most likely. And if it doesn't, you might see a bit of a bounce attempt somewhere around, you know, very low $56,000. Uh, again, Wednesday's low for reference is 55650 again on CME. So if you see below there, that's where, you know, problems become, uh, I guess, more reality in this case uh, for, for the Bitcoin boo laws of the world. Also, of course, it is the weekly closure for CME. And just looking at the weekly right here, we can see on the HPDR bands, uh, Bitcoin might indeed actually reclaim the 618 level um, for this week. I would say that doesn't do a whole hell of a lot for the bulls, but, it, you know, obviously going up is better than going down. No shit. Um, of course, the more obvious area would be reclaiming the 50 percent level right here, which is currently at 59,700, which actually, you know, again, does match up with these statistics over here. I do, however, think it's a little bit less likely, but hey, it's a long day left to go, 13 hours, 23 minutes, and 55 seconds and counting, so Bitcoin could reclaim that region. That would be a slight more of an upside bias coming into next week, but until then, it is still 
in my opinion, based off these statistics, better to be defensive, especially coming into this next week. This is like the last week, basically. We're almost there. We're like one week away from the quad witching date, which is typically where we do see pivots on this market. And then, you know, after that date is usually, you know, a nice, uh, a nice upside move, although probably not going to trade higher than what we've already seen in September already. Moving on from there, I do want to get into some stochastic momentum charts. We can see that the daily still kind of having these issues with uh, daily momentum popping back up up to the upside as long as Bitcoin's again above 53,000 bucks, which unlikely to uh, to close below today. Um, but if you know, the, the more that Bitcoin struggles at this fifty eight and a half thousand dollars region, the more and more this is just going to be like the wheel spinning. And this is CME, which is a little more lenient. Spot price action is already seeing the daily stochastic sort of pop way the fuck up, uh, uh, you know, over here. And that is very soon, probably over the weekend, going to meet up with this trend line regression, which has been governing the last couple of highs. So that is also so another reason why I would kind of express still a bit more um, uh, skepticism or defensiveness in the short term here. Two-day time frame, which just closed last night, is going to continue to the downside, although very, very close to the pivot as of right now. Current number to beat is 58,350. This one obviously not closing tonight, but will close Monday night. Three-day time frame also going to be showing downside momentum as long as Bitcoin's below 60,000 bucks. And then the five-day time frame is also going to be showing downside as long as Bitcoin's below 59. And the weekly, which also closed today, 60,000 bucks. We have so many time frames kind of pivoted around very, very similar numbers here. Um, you know, I would just not have any sort of like major hopium to be spreading as like a reality until Bitcoin starts to reclaim those regions. Until then, we have this next week to kind of play survival mode if you do want to be bullish. Um, but hey, the longer that Bitcoin just basically doesn't break down from here, you know, as I've been saying, at least in the back half of, uh, you know, of this month and, uh, and certainly coming into October, I'm going to have a bullish bias at that point, or at least an upside bias. You know, these are tr uh, traditionally positive gaining times. Anyways, moving on from there, I do want to get into, um, what's my next chart? Uh, yes, another thing of uh, somewhat short-term concern. Again, this is just a 12-hour time frame, but there is hidden bearish divergence building on the 12-hour RSI right here seeing the, the 12-hour RSI make significantly new highs than we saw going all the way back to, you know, even on the 3rd of September, but e I mean, shit, e even all the way back to like the 29th of October, uh, uh, sorry, August, um, where Bitcoin was trading, you know, above 60,000 bucks. So, you know, this is not a death sense or anything like that, but it is, um, you know, if, if it does play out, it is, it is probably good enough to get a little bit of a short-term downside test. And the real question is, does Bitcoin trade below Wednesday's low or not? If it does, look for that move to very likely retest your six of, of September low, um, somewhere in the low 53s. And then <laughs> who knows what the fuck happens after that? Probably a bounce attempt and then, you know, perhaps more downside. But uh, if, if things are going to happen, this next seven day spread, this is like the bears running out the clock and they have the ball on their court and, uh, and they're looking to score. That's kind of the way that I I'd be looking at it as of right now. Now, I do want to leave you with one last uh, point of hopium here because there is something that is very, 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 very uh, strange. No, not strange. I mean, it's not strange at all, uh, but very obtuse to the analysis that we're looking at on Bitcoin. <clears throat> traditional markets, which were, uh, and I, I don't say this to my own horn, but, you know, back in, in the first week of August when we had that major dump, this was a lot easier of a, you know, of a low being in call than, than it was for Bitcoin. Uh, we do see that traditional markets are continuing to construct another higher low, it looks like. Uh, of course, Friday is going to be a long day, but any sort of a closure above the red five right here, which is 55, 60 or so on SPY futures, um, you know, that is going to do it for me. And, you know, if we put this on a line chart, I think it just becomes like, look, are you bearish on that? Yes, I'm bearish on things that go up. No. <laughs> Like, obviously, it's a fucking uptrend, right? Um, so, uh, so again, it's a long day left to go, but just anywhere above there, and that's very likely to uh, to confirm. Um, daily, again, I don't really see any major problems until you trade at least below yesterday's low. At that point, maybe this does fall apart and we get a lower high on the daily and the daily shifts down. But for right now, daily is still, you know, higher highs, higher lows. So I would be respectful of that. Intel proven otherwise. Um, same thing on NASDAQ futures as well. So, you know, if we're looking at the higher term timeframes, like the monthly, like the quarterly, I'm not bearish on this. Um, bearish would, would not be the right word. Corrective, sure. Yeah. I mean, this can, this correction can play out for longer. But, um, 
you know, the, the real question is, if traditional markets are basically at all-time highs right here, by the way, uh, let's just, I'm curious on a measurement basis how far away. Yeah, SPY future is literally less than 2% away, and NASDAQ actually significantly more, it does look like, let's see, exactly, about eight, almost 8% away. Um, you know, if, if these things are, are holding in there, is it going to be wise to be looking for like a major breakdown on Bitcoin? Probably not. Again, it's a long day left to go, but as things stands right, uh, you know, as of right now, um, with, uh, with, with, with 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 both of these major bourses above their major pivots, you know I'm, I'm going to favor that. Uh, the 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 same Nordic, the same sort of number for Nasdaq as would be a uh, spy would be uh, nineteen thousand two hundred fifty five basically. So as long as you're above there by the end of the day, you know still going to have bullish biases on these and. It's kind of hard to be looking for a breakdown on Bitcoin if these things are kind of holding the line here. Anyways, I'll leave you with one last thing. We're 10 minutes into this video. But <laughs> but I found this absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing uh, piece, piece of art on Twitter. And you know what? It might indeed be true. There's rumors going around. There's rumors everywhere that immigrants are eating the air. They're eating, they're eating the pets. And here's what the pets have to say about this. Springfield. They're eating the dogs, the oh, people fuck. that came in. They're eating the cats. <laughs> they're eating they're eating the pets of the Don't people do it. that live there. Springfield. <laughs> <laughs> They're eating the pets, man. Save the pets. If you're if 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 you're a cat, you gotta vote for you gotta vote for the other side at this point. It just is what it is, man. Don't hate me, hate the messenger. No, don't hate the player, hit the game. Or hate the game and the player. Whatever the fuck. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I'll be signing off on that note. As always, I want to wish you the best, best. I should uh warn you, however, tomorrow is gonna be airplane indicator firing off. So uh we'll see what happens from there. All right. Take care, much love, and see you hopefully tomorrow.